Good afternoon, Pastor Rob. I uh, hope everybody's doing good. It's Friday. Hallelujah, it's Friday. I was just looking at this shirt. I got this shirt um, in Hilton Head, South Carolina. My friend Josh runs Adventure Cove. Uh, if you're ever in Hilton Head, and, and I'm, you know, they're not paying me or nothing like that, but uh, literally go to Adventure Cove, get some ice cream, uh, play some golf, play some video games. My friend Josh runs that place. He played, uh, I think he played ball for Oklahoma in baseball. And he's about 6'9", so uh, he's a great guy, great guy. Go down and see Josh. He knows the area real well. And uh, he'll make sure your kids have a good time at Adventure Cove. So anyway, I just want to thank everybody for being here. Appreciate all the uh, support. Um, not asking for any money. I'm not asking for anything, but I would like, just, just like and subscribe, please. Cost nothing. And I'm gonna I'm studying all this stuff, and I want to share uh, you know, my knowledge with you all and encourage everybody. I just want to be an encourager. A lot of people have questions about the Bible, and I'm hoping I can answer some of them. And certainly, as you know, those that have written in or and contact me, which I love, I will answer every question that is constructive or legit. I, I don't answer anything that's antagonistic at all. I won't. I'm won't even, not even going to participate in that. But if you need help, you need prayer, I'm help, glad to walk by your side, be a part of that, and, uh, and help any way I can. So... This is uh, study 15 in Mark. We're in Mark chapter 4. This is one of my favorite passages of Scripture because I believe it is so applicable to life. So if you have your Bible, Mark chapter 4, verse 35, and we'll go through 41. It's about the storms that Jesus was in. And I'm just going to ask you this question up front. How many of you have had storms in life? You know, uh, you know, uh, going through a hard time, going through a tragedy. Let me tell you something. I don't care whether you're a believer in Christ, a child of God or not. You are going to go through storms. That's why I love this portion, the way the disciples react, the way Jesus reacted. And it's so identifiable, so applicable to our lives. And so I just want to be an encouragement today as we look at the storms of life. And uh, know we're going to face them. Nobody's exempt. Good things happen to bad people. Bad things happen to good people. We all, we all know the things. And so um, I think this, this to me is just one of the most applicable scriptures other than the cross and what we need to be say, saved and all that. But literally, just for general everyday life, this is a great portion of scripture. So Mark chapter 4, verse 35, we know that Jesus is still in Capernaum around the north side of the Sea of Galilee. He's been preaching. And this is interesting is that this is the same day he has been preaching all day, which kind of makes me laugh because I was in a church where I was preaching and they wanted me to preach 20 minutes. What would they do if Jesus showed up and preached all day? That's what I got to say. But but 20 minutes, Rob, cut it off in 20 minutes. We don't need longer than 20 minutes. Um, and that just challenged me as a pastor. You know, I, I want to do the right thing and try to help people there. But literally, are you really committed to God if you can only tolerate 20 minutes of teaching? You know, I wasn't the greatest preacher in the world, maybe, but I'm a, I believe I'm a good teacher. So anyway, Hopefully we can learn some, but this is uh, Mark 4, 35, that day when evening came. So Jesus has been preaching all day. He's in the boat, still preaching from out on the water. Uh, evening came. He said this to his disciples. He's done. He's tired. He's ready to go. Let's us go over to the other side. He, so he wants to go to the other side of Galilee. I think, I think the lake or the Sea of Galilee is about 13 miles by 8 miles or something like that. Somebody will know for sure. But it's not real big, but he, you know, he just wants to get away. He's exhausted, and you can see that in these scriptures. Let's go over to the other side. He's still on the boat. He's been preaching all day. So it says, leaving the crowd behind. Isn't that interesting? He just walks away. Jesus needed a break, too, in his humanity. And sometimes you need to get away from the crowd, too. We need to get away. And that's, that's scriptural. If you're stressed out, get away. Go sit by the lake. Grab a cup of tea. Grab a cup of coffee. Forgive me if anybody hates alcohol, but grab a beer. Don't get drunk. Go relax with God. I, I, don't, I don't think that's a thing, but literally there's, you know, people sometimes do that. Get along with God with your Bible. That's what I would recommend. Get along with God with your Bible. Um, get along with Him in prayer. Get away from the noise and the, the air pollution, the, excuse me, the noise pollution that just occupies every minute of every day leaving the crowd behind he took him along uh leaving the crowd behind they took him along just as he was that's interesting what does that mean in his humanity he's exhausted and they know it and they know he's exhausted just as he was in the boat 
And, and he was in the boat preaching all day. There were also other boats. Isn't that interesting? Now they figured out his scheme. We knew formerly, he says, have a boat ready for me. He got in it maybe to get away from the crowd. But now he pushed out from shore. Now the people have figured him out. They've got their boats ready because they're like, he's going to take off. Now, the reason that's significant is because the people are realizing that he benefits them. He benefits them. They're going to do whatever they can to get to Jesus Christ. And I'm going to talk on it maybe. Uh, well, let's look at that now. How many people are in your life that you, this is this is to help you just narrow your schedule down? I don't think a lot of people know that I, I, I actually counsel some CEOs and, and leaders of business as well as church leaders. And one of the things I always say is look around at the people around you. Are they around you because they're helping you? They're supporting you like Moses? Are they lifting your arms when you're exhausted and you need help? Or are they around you because you benefit them and they're just sucking the life out of you? When they talk to you, they feel great and you feel great that you've made them feel better. They go away feeling fantastic that they talk to you, but then, then you go away exhausted like, oh my God, that person just drained me. Um, when I was counseling for years, I used to do it for free. I counseled one guy for over three or four years constantly about all the things he was going through. And literally, I'm exhausted after every conversation. Benefited him. Didn't always benefit me. But when I started charging for counseling, you would be shocked. Well, maybe you wouldn't be. But how many people fell off when I started charging for my time? So I almost ended up counseling nobody. So that was interesting. I learned a lot from that. So Jesus has to get away. People are just around him because he benefits them. And the people are going to look at you the same way. You benefit me, so I'm going to hang around you. Listen, sometimes you got to shed some people. you got to tell them that this is no good. You're not helping me. You're a drain on me. And it's okay to do that. It's okay to do that. Because some people you're going to counsel, you're going to be around, you're going to tell them the same advice for years, and they're never going to benefit from it. So you're just beating a dead horse, so to speak. So he leaves. There's people around him with boats. And a furious squall came in. Verse 37, Mark chapter 4. This squall comes up. This this storm, it's a quick storm, and this is very common in Galilee, by the way, on the Sea of Galilee. Things come up very quickly. It could be very common, all of a sudden, bam. And if you've ever been, and I used to fish Lake Erie quite a bit. Lake Erie is the same way. It's a shallow, great lake. When a storm comes up, it gets really bumpy, really quick. It's time to get off the lake. So a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat. So here it is. How bad is it? Well, the waves are coming over the boat. Uh, boat. They're, they're um, sinking the boat. They're filling up the boat. Um, and so it was nearly swamped. In other words, it was almost full of water. Jesus was in the stern, which is the rear of the boat, uh, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Now look, at, there's no concern for him. Where's the people? And this is what I'm talking about with your friends. Where's the person that has your back and says, Hey, man, leave him alone. He's sleeping. Don't bother him. They're panicking. He benefits them. Wake him up. We need him. We need help. You know what? Honestly, in, in the spiritual life, Jesus is okay with that. God is okay with that. If you're having a hard time, and God doesn't rest. He's always looking out for our benefit. And he's there to answer your prayers. He doesn't need rest. This is just an example. But what I'm saying is, like, if you need God, call on God. Call on him. Say, I need help, God. Help me in my weakness. Help me. Oh, my God, I see a storm coming. And they are going to come. But these guys are panicking. That's something that we need to talk about, too, is they're panicking. But the benefit of a storm is that the more you realize what Jesus can do in your storm, the stronger and more confident you'll be as the next one approaches. Because you'll see him get you through the storm. So when you see the next one coming, you don't panic like these guys. They're panicking. There's no reason to panic. Jesus is sound asleep. He's not worried. Where's he resting? In the arms of his Father. As a believer, we can rest in the arms of God. And when we see the storm approaching... Guess what you can do? You can sleep. You can rest. You can relax. Storms aren't fun. I think storms are awesome. They're fun. To, they're cool to watch from a distance, but it's not always fun being in one. So um, this, this was looking at that. So he was sleeping. The squall came up. Don't you care that we drown? Of course Jesus cares. 100%. What a dumb question. But they're human, and we're human, and we make we do ask dumb questions sometimes. So he got up, and he rebuked the wind and waves, and he said, Quiet. Be still. And I love this portion right here. This is amazing because this is what he says, Seopa Pepimoso. Now, Seopa means be quiet. Pepimoso means stay quiet. Don't you love 
that if we allow God to speak into our storm and we rest on him and we talk to him, we say, God, I need your help in this situation. Not only does he lift us up, but he will speak to the storm and he can say, stop, be quiet, be muzzled and stay quiet. And I think of that like um, when you have you know, family issues, if you allow God to intervene, people that have, I've, I, I use drug addicts quite a bit. I deal a lot with drug addicts on a regular basis or people who are addicted or uh, for whatever reason. And if you allow God to operate in your life, even if it's drugs, for example, you can say, God help me. And he can say to those drugs, be still and stay still. And so he can not only cure the situation you're in, but he can keep it from coming back to you. Now, sometimes we have to get ourselves out of our own situation, and that's hard to do. It's easy to say, but I know when you're in an environment or you're in a neighborhood or you're in a, an area where you cannot move from, it's hard to remove yourself from situations, but you can still go to God and say, speak to my situation, Lord, help me. Help me put people in my life that benefit me, that are going to help me. And so um, he can speak into that situation and even though you may not be able to move your, from your environment, he can improve your environment and make it stay still. So I just love that. Say up a puppy moso. He says, be still and stay still. And the wind and waves obey him in your situation. Uh, he can make he can make things go away. Draw closer to him. He draws closer to you. I think that's James 4, 7. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, be quiet and be still. Then the wind died down. How cool is that? Now imagine being in that boat. You wake Jesus up. He's probably a little groggy. You know he's been teaching all day. He stands up and he yells at the storm. And by the way, I wrote the words down here. This is a laelaps, L-A-I-L-A-P-S. It's a storm. It's a sudden storm. It's a sudden squall, the equivalent of a hurricane. Now imagine seeing hurricane waves. You're out on the Gulf. You're down in Florida. You're in the Keys. You're fishing for redfish and sharks are tearing them up before you can bring them in if you've ever done that. You, you know what I'm talking about. Sudden hurricane, a squall comes up, a hurricane, a megalay, a large, violent, twisting storm is approaching, and you're on the boat. I would, I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to be super Christian here. I would panic as well. And so I'm going to wake Jesus up too. And I'm going to say, God, you've got to do something. This is a megalay. There's a huge storm coming. There's a hurricane. As a matter of fact, it's so bad, God. Can't you see the waves coming over the boat? God, can't you see what's going on in my life? I'm crazy. I'm overwhelmed. I'm being swamped. Everything that's coming after me is coming over the top. I can't handle it. Jesus ain't sleeping, by the way. He is very comfortable. He's very relaxed. And he's going to speak in your situation if you allow him. And he will help you. And a lot of times it's just this. Three things I always tell everybody. Pray. Read your Bible. Go to church. Pray. Read your Bible. Go to a, let me clarify that, a Bible teaching God fearing church. There's a lot of churches. That doesn't mean you should go to them. Look at them, understand them, investigate them. Make sure they're preaching the word of God and not compromising truth. If you do those three things, that's the ABCs of being a successful Christian. Prayer, Bible study, church attendance. So, and you got that way you have body life. You're not alone when you're on the boat. You're on alone you're with hopefully some good Christians. So the storm comes up. It's large. It's violence. It's a mega lay. And there's another word here, too, that I like was um, the megalay. The storm can be, uh, for lack of a better term, can be misinformation. Anemy is the word. A-N-E-M-O-S. A-N-E-M-O-S is the word there that's used here. And I was reading and studying that word just for some reason. And it says it can be empty doctrine. And that's why I say church attendance is so important. But it has to be a Bible teaching, God-fearing church, not compromising the word of God to facilitate the things of the world or to look more like the world or to compromise. You can't compromise. You need to be different, stand different from the world if you're a Bible preaching church. Sorry, that's just the way it is. We shouldn't be accommodating the world. We should be dictating the way the world turns, not the world dictating the way the church turns. So, enemy, that's empty doctrine. And so, excuse me, in this world, and I, I, I kind of, I don't like the way the misinformation stuff is flying around. You know, it's misused. But this is a misinformation. You are going to be flooded with misinformation. You are going to be flooded as a seeker of truth with false doctrine. You are going to be, you can go to churches and hear these stories. Believe it. You know, you can have it. You know, the prosperity gospel. Rob hates it. I'm just going to tell you. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with being rich. There's nothing wrong with being successful. Nothing wrong whatsoever with being a multimillionaire billionaire. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Enjoy your wealth. 
Good for you. I'm happy for you. And don't be jealous of rich people. I'm happy for people that are successful. Good for them. I'm happy for them. But don't get in these churches that are like, name it and claim it and you'll have it. Because, again, I've said this before, you'd all be millionaires. And that's not what God wants. Uh, yes, he wants us to be successful. But the key is resting in Christ Jesus, no matter what your circumstances are. Here comes the storm. This is what's happening. I've been through a storm before. Here comes false teaching. Heard false teaching before. This is the one that always gets me. It's the end of the world. I've figured it out. I've got a formula. Take that book, burn them all, because it's not going to, nobody knows the end of the world. You can see signs of the end of the world coming. You can see signs of Jesus returning. We know that's going to happen, but the Bible is very clear. No man knows the day or the era of hour. Quit buying those false doctrine books. Nobody knows, but it is coming, and it may be close. It may not be close. We assume it's close. We don't know, but God is coming back. So, be ready. so anyway, the, the storm that may come after you as you're seeking for God is the storm of empty false doctrine. So avoid it. Walk away. Look at it. Discern it. Read your Bible, pray, find a God-fearing church, go to that church, get strong, and then when you face the next storm, you won't panic. So I just like, I like to, so storms are transitional. There's a couple of things that I was looking at on that. This is personal for me. You see the storms coming, and I think storms are good. I mean, farmers will tell you sometimes even storms are good um, for a couple of reasons. Um, one of them was, uh, I had a friend, his name was Gail. He was a farmer. And he said this, as I'm farming, you know, and when it was really raining one time and I was riding with him on his farm and he says, uh, I said, man, your plants are really growing fantastically. We've had a lot of rain. Everything's good. He says, you know, as a farmer, rain's good. You need rain. He said, the problem is when you get too much rain, the roots of the plant don't have to go as deep to get the water that they need to survive. So the roots are very surface. So when a storm comes, the root, the plants blow over. This is very important. We have to have strong roots in Christ Jesus so that when the storms come, um, we can we can have the roots in Christ. When they come, it just blows and we sway in the wind. And that's what Gail was telling me. He's like, yeah, when the rain is plentiful, they don't dig deep. These plants need to dig deep. We need just rain in, in doses so that the roots have to go a little deeper so that when a storm comes, they don't all get blown over. And so this is so important for us. In a storm, we have to grow deep roots. So when the next storm comes, we're ready for it. It's transitional. And in that transition, have you ever driven around your neighborhood and you see all these old trees that need to be tore, tore down or cut down or they're falling down? In a storm, what happens? They're blocking your street. The branches are in the street or they hit your car, which happened to us once. They're, got, they're transitional. Storms are transitional and that those things that are weak will fall. That's why I think storms are good. They make us stronger. We panic maybe in the first one, but the second one we can say, you know what, I've already been there. And also in storms, with another benefit of storms and them, and them being transitional is you find out who your friends are very quickly. Everybody's friends when everything's going good. And I give this advice to my daughter, as, as a matter of fact. When she dates somebody or when they're dating, I said, never trust a man completely until you've seen him angry. When he's angry, you find out who he really is. When things aren't so cushy-cush and things get tough, and things get difficult or you have an argument, you really find out the character of an individual, how deep inside, who they really are in a storm. So don't ever trust a man, ladies, if you're listening, or guys, hey, if, if you've never seen your your soon-to-be mate or mate or whatever uh, in a storm or seen them angry, be suspect because you don't know. Some people are crazy. People could throw things, whatever, anyway. But, but in a storm, the weak things get broken they get tossed and you find out who your friends are are they strong do they have your back are they going to be with you or when things get rough are they going to walk away now there's a couple of things on that my my opinion is let them walk if nobody's going to go through the battles with me and you know obviously i was a ranger and i was in the police force and i, and I worked for homeland security and i've been in some very dire situations i've been in situations we were clearing houses and some guys panic and i'm sorry to say that but um, some people like the idea of going into situations that are tough, but when the situations arise, you find out who's really got your back and who's really got the metal to go to battle with you. And so um, those things happen. So in the storms, it's transitional. You find out who your friends are. You find out who you can trust. Those are the guys you want to keep around. So storms are good in that it weeds out the weak. That can change your whole landscape. 
Not only does it strengthen you, it shows you who around you is going to be faithful to you, who's going to look out for you. And I've got stories for that. We can always talk about them. Maybe one day I'll tell stories. But anyway, I like that. So storms are transitional. God's going to clean out the week, and he's going to make you stronger. So the next time you see a storm coming, you don't panic like the disciples do. You're going to say, God got me through the last one. He'll get me through the next one. You can get even anxiety when you think something's going to happen. But now you don't. You have less anxiety because you said, I've been through this before. And sometimes we go through storms for other people. Anyway, stuff like that. So I like storms are transitional. They're awesome. Uh, we can look at storms differently now that we've been through a few. I mean, basic training in the military. Again, I'm sorry I use military things. That's my life. 22 years. Your know, basic training is one way to weed out the weak. Then AIT is another way to weed out the weak. Airborne, another way to weed out. Air, ranger indoctrination or RASP or ranger school or SEAL school. All weeding out, what are you doing? Weeding out the weak to have, so you have a better, stronger soldier. Somebody, the purpose of the military is to defend our nation. It's not to make people feel good. It's there to see who's going to be there when the start, shots start ringing out. So we need people that are willing to face the storm. And so... That's why the military does or should be doing what it, what it used to do anyway. So I'm better for going through a storm. I can do it. God will help me. This is the reasons for storms. You get less anxiety uh, the next time a storm approaches. When you've been in combat, when you've been faced with uh, situations and you've had, and I've had guns in my face, a little nervous the first time. The next time it happens, like, okay, here we go again. You get through it. Um, and so, it, it, you know, you don't panic as much. You don't get that anxiety. You, I've been here. I've done that. Some people are very hard and they're very tough. Man, there are some warriors in this world and thank God for them. We can be spiritual warriors too for ourselves, for our families, and for others. I love storms because they make you stronger. Imagine a life where you just go through life. You're just drifting. You're on the lazy river forever. Oh, I got a lot of friends in the lazy river. But when it starts getting rough, you figure out. So storms are transitional. So I just wanted to go there. Are people around you for their good or for your good? A storm can reveal allegiances. It can weed out the bad. Uh, the winds can break the weak. And the, and the storms can allow you to shine. Here's another one. You can allow you to shine. When you're a seasoned veteran of spiritual warfare, when you're a seasoned veteran in general, when you're a doctor working in the emergency room and you said, well, I've seen this before, that's when people rally around you because they see your strength. I've seen this before. Or so I can do it. And we know this man to see. So this, this woman doctor, this man doctor in the emergency room in triage says, oh, I've seen this before. Guy comes in bleeding. I've been there um, stitching people up in the emergency room and stuff like that. Uh, seen it before. Been there, done that. And people look to you for strength. They want to see how you're going to handle the situation. And by watching you through the storm, they learn how to handle the storms in their lives. Your children, your wives, men, your, your husbands, ladies. Um, model the storms uh, by leaning on Christ, resting in the storm. Let him battle things for you. Sometimes things are out of our control. We must lean on Christ Jesus. And when you learn to do that, and the sooner we learn to do that as believers, the next storm just isn't so bad. So I like this portion of scripture because I like, I don't like the storms, don't get me wrong. But I think storms, and we look at them negatively, are highly beneficial. And so What's interesting about it is Jesus gets up, he rebukes the storm. He says, say up a pepe moso, be still and stay still. And the disciples see that. Now you would think that um, you would think that they would go, wow, that was pretty cool. But they don't do that. Then the winds died down and it was completely calm. So when you're in a storm of life and you ask for Jesus to say, say up a pepe moso, the storm was bad. It was horrible. It was a megale. It was a hurricane. It was twisting and the waves were coming over. But look at this. When he says, stay still and be still, the Bible says that the calm was greater than the noise of the storm. They got through it. There was great calm. There was a megale storm, but after the megale storm, there was a megale calm. Isn't that something? When God comes into your life and he handles the storm, there's a megale calm. Like, well, that wasn't so bad. We got through it. God got us through it. So there was a megale calm, be still, be quiet, stay quiet. And so his disciples, uh, he looks at them and says, why are you so afraid? Don't you have faith? And this is what God's going to ask us one day. Why were you so scared in the storm? Didn't I get you through so many? Or maybe you haven't been through one yet. Get ready. They're coming. But rest in Christ. Lean on Christ. So look at this. Verse 41. 
after the storm was calm, there was a great megale storm. Now there's a great megale calm because Jesus said, say, epa pepe moso, um, be calm and stay calm. I love that authority. The authority of Christ in your storm. He had authority over demons, authority over disease, authority over disability, authority over denominations. Now he's got uh, authority over destruction. He's got authority over the storms of life if we allow him to have them. Certainly he had it right here in this situation. But Mark chapter 4 verse 41 says, they were terrified. They were more afraid of Jesus now than they were afraid of in the storm, of the storm. Because they're saying, how in the world? Does this man have authority over the storm? Who commands the storms with his lips, with his mouth, with his voice? And they're like, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? What an amazing portion of scripture because it's so applicable. We are going to go through storms. No person is ever exempt. Uh, I was thinking of Matthew Perry who passed away. He was on frame. You guys know who Matthew Perry was. He said, you know, it was really great. He had drug addiction. He was in the storms his whole life, by the way. And I just read a little bit on him because we were fans of Friends when we were going to college down in the 90s. Love Friends. And he says, you know, for about six months, all the success was great. It was fantastic. I loved it. But after I got used to the success, the storms came in again. And I was like, it was worthless. It's like Solomon said, it's all grasping for the wind. We're grasping for the ground. We're trying to hold on to things we can't take with us. We're trying to hold on to things that aren't going to help us. Success is great for a little bit. Uh, then you need more. Then you need more. Then we need more. Then I got to do something else. Then I got to challenge myself. Listen, success is great, but it can also be a hindrance. Now, I always said God probably kept me from being super successful because if I was super successful, I might realize I don't need or think, think, I don't need God so much. And that was what Matthew Perry was saying. I don't know if he was a believer or not, but certainly he was saying, when I re achieved my wealthy status, it was great for six months. And then it was like, now what? So anyway, that, that was interesting. So here we are. Uh, they were These guys were terrified. They went through the storm. Uh, and they were more afraid of Jesus now than they were afraid of the storm because he showed his authority over the storm. But he saved, he saved them. So... Um, the word, by the way, for that, for their fear for him was uh, Epho-Bethesan Megale. E-P-H-O-B-E-T-H-E-S-A-N Megale. Somebody's going to they feared him greatly because he calmed the Megale storm. So anyway, in the storms of life, lean on Jesus. Um, he's going to season you. He's going to make you stronger. It's okay. Embrace the storm sometimes because, you know, let me, you know, we can look at storms this way. And I'm not saying they're fun, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm looking forward to any of the storms. But literally, maybe we could look at the storm and say, this is another opportunity for me to see what God's going to do in the storms of my life. And I can tell you this, one thing, he will always be faithful. He has authority in the storms. He has authority in the storms of your life. We have to let him in and let him do that. We have to learn to lean on him. Remember, read your Bible, pray, go to church, find a God-fearing uncompromising Bible preaching church and attend regularly. You don't have to get involved if you don't want to. Be a, a person in the distance to stay in the background. But if you can get involved, get involved and join that, what they call the koinonia, the fellowship of the believers. And hopefully through that you can find strength as well. So anyway, that's all I'm going to do today. I'm sorry I went long on this one, but I thought it was an important message. Follow God. The storms are coming. But as we go through each storm, each storm that follows that storm, should get a little bit easier because we find strength in knowing that God will get us through each one. Now you're a seasoned Christian. So have a great day and I'll see you Monday.